Aboard at a Ship's Helm by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Aboard at a Ship's Helm A young steersman steering with care Through fog on a sea coast dolefully ringing an ocean bell oh a warning bell rocked by the waves oh you give good notice indeed you bell by the sea reefs ringing 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 to warn the ship from its wreck place for as on the alert o oh steersman you mind the loud admonition the bows turn the freighted ship tacking speeds away under her gray sails the beautiful and the noble ship with all her precious wealth speeds away gaily and safe but oh the ship the immortal ship o oh, ship aboard the ship ship of the body ship of the soul voyaging 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 End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. That's L I B R I V O X dot O R G. Before Action by W. N. Hodgson Read for LibriVox.org by Podvoxer By all the glories of the day And the cool evening's benison By that sunset touch that lay Upon the hills where day was done By beauty lavishly outpoured And blessings carelessly received By all the days that I have lived Make me a soldier, Lord! By all of man's hopes and fears And all the wonders poets sing the laughter of unclouded years and every sad and lovely thing by all the romantic ages stored with high endeavour that was his by all his mad catastrophes make me a man o lord i that on my familiar hill saw with uncomprehending eyes a hundred of thy sunset spill their fresh and saccharine sacrifice here the sun swings his noonday sword must say good-bye to all of this by all the delights i shall miss Help me to die, O oh Lord. End of Before Action This recording is in the public domain. The Cow by Robert Louis Stevenson For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley The friendly cow, all red and white, I love with all my heart. She gives me cream with all her might to eat with apple tart. She wanders lowing here and there, and yet she cannot stray, all in the pleasant open air, the pleasant light of day. And blown by all the winds that pass, and wet with all the showers, she walks among the meadow grass and eats the meadow flowers. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dear Heart, Why Will You Use Me So? by James Joyce For LibriVox.org Narrated by Sean McKinley Dear Heart, Why Will You Use Me So? Dear Eyes That Gently Me Upbraid Still Are You Beautiful But, oh, How Is Your Beauty Raimented? Through the clear mirror of your eyes, Through the soft side of kiss to kiss, Desolate winds assail with cries The shadowy garden where love is. And soon shall love dissolved be, When over us the wild winds blow. But you, dear love, too dear to me, Alas, why will you use me so? End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Gentle Lady, Do Not Sing by James Joyce For LibriVox.org Narrated by
by Sean McKinley. Gentle lady, do not sing sad songs about the end of love. Lay aside sadness, and sing how love that passes is enough. Sing about the long, deep sleep of lovers that are dead, and how in the grave all love shall sleep. Love is a weary now. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Golden Pulse by John Myers O'Hara Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett Golden Pulse grew on the shore, ferns along the hill, and the red cliff roses bore bees to drink their fill. Bees that from the meadows bring wine of melilot, honey sups on golden wing to the garden grot. But to me, neglected flower, Phaon will not see, Passion brings no crowning hour, Honey, nor the bee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Hand Mirror by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake See this it sends back? Who is it? Is it you? Outside fair costume, with ashes and filth, No more a flashing eye, no more a sonorous voice or springing step. Now some slave's eye, voice, hands, step. A drunkard's breath, unwholesome eater's face, Venereal lees flesh, Lungs rotting away piecemeal, stomach sour and cankerous, joints rheumatic, bowels clogged with abomination, blood circling dark and poisonous streams, words babble, hearing and touch callous, no brain, no heart left, no magnetism of sex, such from one look in this looking glass ere you go hence such a result so soon and from such a beginning end of poem this recording is in the public domain i do not love thee by carolyn elizabeth sarah norton read for LibriVox.org by clarica I do not love thee, no, I do not love thee. And yet, when thou art absent, I am sad, And envy even the bright blue sky above thee, Whose quiet stars may see thee and be glad. I do not love thee, yet I know not why, Whate'er thou dost seems still well done to me. And often in my solitude I sigh, That those I do love are not more like thee. I do not love thee, yet when thou art gone, I hate the sound, though those who speak be dear, which breaks the lingering echo of the tone thy voice of music leaves upon my ear. I do not love thee, yet thy speaking eyes, with their deep, bright, and most expressive blue, between me and the midnight heaven arise oftener than any eyes I ever knew. I know I do not love thee, yet, alas, Others will scarcely trust my candid heart, And oft I catch them smiling as they pass, Because they see me gazing where thou art. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. It is not a word by Sarah Teasdale. Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica. It is not a word spoken. Few words are said, nor even a look of the eyes, nor a bend of the head, but only a hush of the heart that has too much to keep, only memories waking that sleep so light a sleep. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love came to us in time gone by by James Joyce. 
for LibriVox.org, narrated by Sean McKinley. Love came to us in time gone by, when one at twilight shyly played, and one in fear was standing nigh, for love at first is all afraid. We were grave lovers, love is past, that had his sweet hours many a one. Welcome to us now, at the last, the ways that we shall go upon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Martin by Joyce Kilmer Read for LibriVox.org by Leanne Howlett when I am tired of earnest men, Intense and keen and sharp and clever, Pursuing fame with brush or pen Or counting metal discs forever, Then from the halls of shadow land Beyond the trackless purple sea, Old Martin's ghost comes back to stand Beside my desk and talk to me. Still on his delicate pale face A quizzical thin smile is showing. His cheeks are wrinkled like fine lace, his kind blue eyes are gay and glowing. He wears a brilliant-hued cravat, a suit to match his soft gray hair, a rakish stick, a knowing hat, a manner blithe and debonair. How good that he who always knew that being lovely was a duty should have gold halls to wander through and should himself inhabit beauty. How like his old unselfish way to leave those halls of splendid mirth and comfort those condemned to stay upon the bleak and sombre earth. Some people ask, what cruel chance made Martin's life so sad a story? Martin? Why, he exhaled romance and wore an overcoat of glory. A fleck of sunlight in the street, a horse, a book, a girl who smiled. Such visions made each moment sweet for this receptive, ancient child. Because it was old Martin's lot to be, not make a decoration. Shall we then scorn him, having not his genius of appreciation? Rich joy and love he got and gave. His heart was merry as his dress. Pile laurel wreaths upon his grave, who did not gain, but was, success. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. May Day by Sarah Teasdale Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica A delicate fabric of bird song floats in the air. The smell of wet, wild earth is everywhere. Red small leaves of the maple are clenched like a hand. Little girls at their first communion, the pear trees stand. Oh, I must pass nothing by without loving it much. The raindrop try with my lips, the grass with my touch. For how can I be sure I shall see again The world on the first of May, shining after the rain? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Most Sacred Mountain by Eunice Tejans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake Space And the twelve clean winds of heaven And this sharp exultation Like a cry After the slow six thousand steps of climbing This is Tai Shan The beautiful, the most holy Below my feet the foothills nestle, brown with flecks of green, and lower down the flat brown plain, the floor of earth, stretches away to blue infinity. Beside me in this airy space the temple roofs cut their slow curves against the sky, and one black bird circles above the void. Space and the twelve clean winds are here, and with them broods eternity, a swift white peace, a presence manifest. The rhythm ceases here, time 
has no place. This is the end that has no end. Here, when Confucius came, a half a thousand years before the Nazarene, he stepped with me, thus into timelessness. The stone besides us waxes old, the cavern stone that says, On this spot once Confucius stood and felt the smallness of the world below. The stone grows old. Eternity is not for stones. But I shall go down from this airy place, this swift white peace, this stinging exultation. And time will close about me, and my soul stir to the rhythm of the daily round. Yet, having known, life will not press so close, and always I shall feel time ravel thin about me. For once I stood in the white windy presence of eternity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night's Remember by Sarah Teasdale Read for LibriVox.org by Clarica The days remember and the nights remember The kingly hours that once you made so great. Deep in my heart they lie, hidden in their splendor, Buried like sovereigns in their robes of state. Let them not wake again, Better to lie there wrapped in memories, Jeweled and arrayed, Many a ghostly king has waked from death sleep and found his crown stolen and his throne decayed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Noiseless Patient Spider by Walt Whitman. For LibriVox.org. Narrated by Sean McKinley. A noiseless patient spider, I marked where on a little promontory it stood, isolated, marked how to explore the vacant vast surrounding. It launched forth filament, filament, filament out of itself, ever unreeling them, ever tirelessly speeding them. And you, O oh my soul, where you stand, surrounded, detached, in measureless oceans of space, ceaselessly musing, venturing, throwing, seeking the spheres to connect them, till the bridge you will need be formed, till the ductile anchor hold, till the gossamer thread you fling catch somewhere, O oh my soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Rear Porches of an Apartment Building by Maxwell Bodenheim Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake A sky that has never known sun, moon, or stars. A sky that is like a dead, kind face, would have the color of your eyes. A servant girl singing of pear trees in the sun and scraping the yellow fruit you once picked when your lavender white eyes were alive. On the porch above you are two women, whose faces have the color of brown earth that has never felt rain. The still wet basins of ponds that have been drained are their eyes. They knit gray rosettes and nibble cakes, and on the top porch are three children gravely kissing each other's foreheads, and an ample nurse with a huge red fan. The passing of the afternoon to them is but the lengthening of blue-black shadows on brick walls. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Smile, Smile, Smile by Wilfred Owen 
Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Clare Head to limp head the sunk-eyed wounded Scanned yesterday's mail, the casualties typed small, And large, vast booty from our latest haul, Also they read of cheap homes not yet planned. For, said the paper, when this war is done, the men's first instinct will be making homes. Meanwhile, their foremost need is aerodromes, it being certain war has just begun. Peace would do wrong to our undying dead. The sons we offered might regret they died if we got nothing lasting in their stead. We must be solidly indemnified. Though all be worthy victory which all bought, we rulers, sitting in this ancient spot, would wrong our very selves if we forgot the greatest glory will be theirs who fought, who kept this nation in integrity. Nation? The half-limbed readers did not chafe, but smiled at one another, curiously, like secret men who know their secret safe. This is the thing they know and never speak, that England, one by one, had fled to France. Not many elsewhere now save under France. Pictures of these broad smiles appear each week, and people in whose voice real feeling rings say, How they smile! They're happy now, poor things! End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sonnet One by Richard Shenovix Trench. Read for LibriVox.org by Kale. All beautiful things bring sadness, nor alone music, whereof that wisest poet spake, because in us keen longings they awake after the good for which we pine and groan, from which exiled we make continual moan, till once again we may our spirits slake at those clear streams which man did first forsake when he would dig for foundations on his own. All beauty makes us sad, yet not in vain, for who would be ungracious to refuse or not to use this sadness without pain, whether it flows upon us from the hues of sunset, from the time of stars and dews, from the clear sky or waters pure of stain? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. With Esther by Wilfred Scowan Blunt Read for LibriVox.org by Patrick Beverley He who has once been happy Is for a out of destruction's reach. His fortune then holds nothing secret, And eternity, which is a mystery to other men, Has, like a woman, given him its joy. Time is his conquest. Life, if it should fret, has paid him tribute. He can bear to die, he who has once been happy. When I set the world before me, and survey its range, its mean ambitions, its scant fantasies, the shreds of pleasure which for lack of change men wrap around them and call happiness, the poor delights which are the tale and sum of the world's courage in its martyrdom, when I hear laughter from a tavern door, when I see crowds agape and in the rain, watching on tiptoe and with stifled roar to see a rocket fired or a bull slain, when misers handle gold, when orators touch strong men's hearts with glory till they weep, when cities deck their streets for barren wars which have laid waste their youth, and when I keep calmly the count of my own life, and see on what poor stuff my manhood's dreams were fed, till I too learned what dole of vanity will serve a human soul for daily bread, then I remember that I once was young, and lived with Esther, the world's gods among. End of recording. This recording is in the public domain. The World Below the Brine by Walt Whitman Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Davis Drake The world below the brine, forests at the bottom of the sea, the branches and leaves, sea lettuce, vast lichens, strange flowers and seeds, the thick tangle, openings, and pink turf. 
different colors, pale gray and green, purple, white, and gold, the play of light through the water. Dumb swimmers there among the rocks, coral, gluten, grass, rushes, and the aliment of the swimmers. Sluggish existences grazing there suspended, or slowly crawling close to the bottom. The sperm whale at the surface blowing air and spray, or disporting with his flukes. The leaden-eyed shark, the walrus, the turtle, the hairy sea leopard, and the stingray. Passions there, wars, pursuits, tribes, sight in those ocean depths, breathing that thick-breathing air, as so many do. The change thence to the sight here, and to the subtle air, breathed by beings like us who walk this sphere. The change onward from ours to that of beings who walk other spheres. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.